Поляна, поляна, вишко малявана, хто життя? So what did we just hear? That was a song called Poljana Poljana, a harvest song from Eastern Slovakia in the Carpatho Rusin language. Very different than the singing that you might hear women doing in the United States or England or any place in the West. But that kind of full-throated, open-voiced singing is found among all the Slavic people, particularly among women's groups and women's singing, uh, basically all the way from Southeastern Europe and the Balkans, up through Poland, Slovakia, all the way up to the coast of the Arctic Sea in Russia. The song was performed by harmonious singer Beata Beganiova, who, who herself is from Eastern Slovakia. I'm Walt Mahoplich. I am the director and founder of Harmonia, a band based in Cleveland that does music from all over Eastern Europe and basically plays music from all the different Slavic people. That brings up a big question. So who are the Slavic people? Well, the Slavs are a large group of related peoples from Central and Eastern Europe. Up until about 600 AD, they spoke a single language. About this time, they started to migrate to the various places that they moved in Central and Eastern and Southeastern Europe. Uh, and since it really wasn't that long ago, maybe just about a thousand years that they've been separated, their languages are really close. And in fact, if you know one of the Slavic languages, or better yet, two, you can basically understand uh, pretty well almost anything else. It's kind of like Italian and Spanish, let's say. So they're closely related. And the cultures are closely related. So... Uh, based on their languages, we can divide the Slavs into three branches. There are the East Slavic countries, which you'll see on the map. Uh, the East Slavs are primarily the Russians, the Ukrainians, the Belarusians, and the Carpatho Rusins. Now, the West Slavs are primarily the Poles, the Slovaks, and the Czechs. Now, in the next map, you will see the location of the South Slavic peoples. And those are primarily the Slovenians, the Croatians, the Serbs, the Bosnians, Montenegrins, Macedonians, and Bulgarians. Beginning about 1880, large numbers of Slavic people also migrated and moved to North America, particularly to cities like Youngstown, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Chicago, and to places like the coal fields, in Pennsylvania and Montana. Looking at today's maps, it seems like every nationality has their own country and only one nationality in a country. But this is really new. If you wanna understand the differences between Slavic musical traditions, you need to know that the Slavic people lived divided among the four large empires for most of the past thousand years. This map, from the mid 1800s gives you an idea of what it was like. People, ideas, and music could move pretty easily within an empire, but crossing a border was much more difficult. You'll see in this picture that there were four major empires. In the East was the Russian Empire, which was primarily Slavic. And because it was all Slavic, some of the very oldest traditions have been preserved there particularly in the western parts where you find Ukraine and Belarus, uh, up in the Carpathian mount Mountains in particular. In Central Europe was the Austro-Hungarian Empire, or also called the Habsburg Empire. Uh, it was very, very diverse, very multicultural. Many different kinds of people lived there to an extent interspersed. And also, 
it was very much part of Central Europe. So their music included polkas and waltzes, as well as the chardash, which is a couple dance. And of course, in addition to that, there were some older village traditions as well. Now, if we look to the south, this is the area that is in green on the map. Uh, the Ottoman Empire, which is sometimes called the Turkish Empire, uh, stretched from the border with Austria-Hungary, which was on the Sava and Danube rivers, all the way into the Middle East and North Africa. So people living in the Ottoman Empire were exposed to all kinds of musical influences, scales and rhythms and instruments from the Middle East. Now, a fun fact, the border between the Ottoman Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire was a hostile border. Uh, there were numerous wars between those two empires and the border moved back and forth. And sometimes people fled across it and migrated a great distance. So you might find even in Slovakia, a group of Croatians living. And the other thing that happened is that sometimes people would be cut off from members of their own ethnic group because the border moved and it might last for a century or two, in which case they could have very diverse traditions. Now, the other thing you should know is that couple dances like polkas and waltzes, as I mentioned, became popular among the Slavic people in Central and Eastern Europe. You know, in places like Slovakia, the Czech Republic, uh, Poland, Ukraine. However, in the former Ottoman territories, in the places like Croatia and Serbia and certainly Macedonia and Bulgaria, circle dances co called kolos or oro or horo, they remained popular and are to this day. So it's very rare to find a couple dance. Uh, and the music is reflected in that. So let's hear some of the music. Okay, well, we're going to start off with an example of some East Slavic music from Ukraine, a piece called Verhovino, followed by a dance piece called Polomeka. <laughs> Now we'd like to play a couple of pieces from Eastern Slovakia. These are the sorts of waltzes that you could find really in any of the areas that had been part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire among any of the Slavic people. The particular tunes are a couple of waltz tunes called Aya Tapancharna, which means I'm so dark, I'm as dark as a blackberry, uh, followed by another little tune called Ahod Preshova, from the city of Preshova. Thank you. 
a Slovak Čardáš, ešte si a pohár vinka vypia. Now I would like to play a piece that is very typical of the Ottoman influence, the Turkish influence, let's say, in music of the South Slavs. This is a famous piece called Nishka Banya. You will notice that the rhythm is quite different than anything else we played before. It's not in 3-4 or 2-4, uh, but rather it's in a rhythm called 9-8. And also, you'll hear some use of other scales that you typically don't find in the West, particularly one called Hijaz, which kind of goes like this. <laughs> But that's only for part of it. So, Nishkabanya. <laughs> Now this is another South Slavic piece that uh, is shared by both Croatians and Serbians, but it is from north of the Sava River and the area around the Danube. It's called Malo Polo. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. I hope you've learned something about the Slavic people and our cultural traditions. I would first like to thank uh, the committee and organization of Simple Slavic for making this possible. Thanks again.